hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine series hope you guys are doing good in the previous video we spoke about entity hierarchy so it was basically a focus on the ui aspect of the hierarchy so how i managed to create this hierarchy in such way that i can actually move things around and create a, a scene hierarchy as you can see here so if you are interested in that and you want to know how to create something like that for your engine or maybe you just want to know how i made it for this engine then you might want to check the last video i uploaded on my channel the link is in the description below you can find that or maybe it should be appearing somewhere on the screen right now but you can just go and check that out and you're probably going to be learning uh, something while watching that video in today's video we're going to be talking about the component panel how i managed to have this responsive uh, window and uh, all these component getting updated every time i click on an entity I just show the component of that entity so how i manage that it's going to be the topic of today's video but before we get into that i just want to make sure i mention this there is a link in the description below to my patreon page where you guys can find the source code of this game engine so i'm not going to be writing all the code because that's too much i this is this is something that should take at least five hours if you want to write everything involved into this that's why I'm not going to be writing any line of code. But if you guys want to take the source code and check into it properly and see if that fits your requirement, there is a link in the description to my Patreon page for that. So please subscribe and like this video if you haven't and let's get started. Basically, the way I organize this is I have the panel, which is the window. And inside of that window you can see I have all these headers and each headers here actually represent the component UI but I didn't call it component UI in this engine I call them controls so let me switch to the code and show you what I mean you can see this directory here called controls this is actually where I have all the controls for each component you can see camera direct light um, material model whatever so you can see all those controls there and they're all inherited from this I control interface or abstract class. So they all have to implement this show function, which actually define what should be printed on the screen. So this is the only um, yeah, undefined function, if I can say like that, you have here. But we have uh, a lot of virtual function that can be defined in a different way. You can see this set data here, which is the function we use to initialize the UI. So if this function returns true that means the entity actually has this component but i'm going to show you how i implemented this for a specific component i'm just sending i'm just returning false here because this is not a specific component so i don't want this to be shown if it is not defined in the in the um, child class created as a control so that's why i'm sending false here and we have this set prop which is basically an initialization i could have set this in the constructor but i didn't want to carry this everywhere i have to go that's why i just create these set props here and simply set the target scene because i want to be able to actually access the entity informations like the component specifically and things like that and uh, i also have this init function this init function has nothing in this class here but i should i am actually uh, it's, it is actually built in such way that the class uh, the child class you know um, a control like a tr the transform component for example the transform control for example will implement what init means for it you see that's actually important because initializing a, a control for a specific component it's quite component driven so that's why I have this virtual function here which is going to be implemented below um, in the child class and I can simply call it here while registering this uh, UI or this control and here I just kind of register the unselected every time i select an entity i want to you know be able to listen to this event entity selected because that's actually important that's the way i actually gathered all the component of each entity because every time you click on an entity on the viewport or on 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 on, on, on the hierarchy here then i want to make sure i update the selected entity and this is actually going to be uh used to gather the info the component information and be able to change that so and the way i actually manage this i go to the component window you can see i have windows and here I have components window so if i go to the components window here you can see i have this register control this is actually important let me go quite below here and show you 
you can see I have registered control. So this array here will store all the registered components control basically. Now for each entity, I have the current control here because um, each entity has its own set of component. So that's why I want to be able to actually define which control should be shown. That's why I have two arrays here. This one holds all the controls. It, it's not relative to the entity, but to the system, to the engine and things like that. So we have all the controls here. And now for the entity we've currently selected, we want to be able to actually have this order list here. And the way we register that, uh, the way we actually register is by just, let me go to the register function. Uh, by just creating yeah we just go here and we create a unique should be a shared pointer basically it's shared here yeah that's something i should change but i'm not worrying about that right now i'm gonna change that so i'm surprised it didn't cause any problem that mean unique pointer i never tried this it's okay unique and share actually work yeah you can see i simply create a, um, a unique pointer and i call the set props that i showed before and then I just add it into my register controls. So the registered control list. And you can see up here, I call this function to register all the control I have on my engine. So every time I create a new control, I just come here and I add a new line then add the type of that. And that's basically it. I don't have to do anything else. That's going to be done alone. So that's actually important. And now every time I click on an entity, you can see you ha we have this init entity control. We have the entity ID passed. So basically what we do here is we pass this entity and I'm going to be showing you that in just a moment. And this, we will go and check if this entity has the current component we're testing with. So let me go to the transform, for example, go to the transform. You can see we have set data here. Remember this function was a parent uh, class function. It's we've already written that here and you can see what we basically do is we go and say get component so if the component is not a null pointer then we know that we actually have this component I could have simply say okay return scene has component but I, I wanted to mix both getting the component and returning true or false in once in one uh, statement that's why I decided to use a get instead of using the has because with the has I could say if has then get but whatever it's working and I just don't want to write too much lines of code and you can see we don't have the init function written here because there's not really something to initialize in the transform component but I just have that function in case if you have like a physics something I don't know you want to I don't know you want to initialize something and sometimes that might be important but you can see here this is the show function implemented we simply have this float field which per I'm going to be getting to in, in another video how I create my field and things because I'm not using straight out of I'm we I created my own widget on top of that which I can use to make this thing that's why you can see my transform here with this uh, kind of layout and you see there's like this consistent layout of, of the fields here that's because I've created a sort of structure to do that yeah, but I think I'm going to be talking about that in another video so this extend pop-up it's because in the eye control up here we have a pop-up you see and uh, we have a pop-up which way is that uh, yeah we have it basically here and pop-up where is the yeah sorry yeah we have the pop-up right here and you see if the entity is removable we have this parameter here which actually tells if this control is removable because you can see here some component are not removable I don't want this material since material is not a component it's a part of the model I don't want it to be removable the transform same way I want all entity to uh, to have a transform component I don't want it to be removed. but if I go down to let's say go to the point light here so this is the spotlight so if I want to remove you can see the remove button does appear because that is removable so that's why I need this property here and if I go down here and if I go here and I check this guy is removable then I want to show the remove button and this extend pop-up is where I actually implement uh, more functions more uh, yeah more things that I can do about this you can see for the transform component I have the reset so and when I reset I just simply set the component value to be a default value so that's why if I go back here and I go up here and say let me change this to something like this if I go up here and say reset you see 
set this back. So this extend pop-up is just a way for me to extend the functionality of this button right here. And I can do that for each control. That's actually quite, I, I actually like it because yeah, each component can have something, some specific things there. And I think that's really interesting. So, and uh, basically here, as I said, I just check if this guy returns true, then we push back the control into the current controls. And in the show function up here for this window, which I should be able to find, we simply loop through the current control for this current entity and we show them. And we also have the list pop up for the uh, component list. So when I click right here, you can see we have the list of components appearing because we want to be able to actually add uh, components and things like that. So that's why I have that pop up here. This pop up here and you can see how I made it down here. Where is that again? I don't even remember. Yeah, here. I just have a list of component types and in that list of component type I simply create a selectable to have my pop-up so that's basically how I made this that's basically how I created this responsive UI every time I click on an entity and every time an entity is selected you can see the unselected here then I just uh, get the entity ID and call the init entity control and I make sure I set the selected entity to to the new one so every time you click every time this event is posted this guy just listens to that and respond properly by updating the entity by updating the, the control list and you can see the result on the screen uh, being so practical and the thing I really love about this is the fact that the event system is fitting quite good in this engine so I just click something here and this guy has nothing to do with this guy here but he's still uh, exchange they are still able to exchange information via the event system and that's actually something I like so that's basically how I manage this um, remember that you guys can find the link to the source code in the description below if you guys are interested in that thank you guys for watching please subscribe if you haven't like this video if you think that was actually helpful for you and if you have any concern any question just write me in the description below so see you in the next one ciao